meaningful complaint is that for a certification of some movement thing that she's doing, she has to be able to hang on a bar and bring her knee up towards her chest. Hang and then as well swing and yeah, so she swings and then quite a gymnastics move. She has to swing, be able to curl her, her legs up. And what she feels when she does this is this binding together, this drawing together on this side. Yeah? Okay. And, and then immediately gets knee pain. Knee pain. Okay, so her meaningful task, her meaningful task is hang on a bar, swing and bring your legs up. And we're going, okay, let's go find the bar, let's go right from the top. But a standing screen is still really important because you need to know where things start, all right? Now, I don't think the weight shift is so important because she's not going to have her feet on the ground in this task, right? So what is happening through that hip flexion phase and what she feels as she's lifting that, that, that leg, and when we watch Claire do it, you'll see exactly what what she's complaining about, this, this pulling together on, on that task. Okay, so just turn this way for me, turn the face and pull All right, so stand on your left leg and lift your right one. So you can see this shortening of this whole side of her body and then come back down again. And then just as we look in standing, you, you'll see her pelvis is rotated to the right, her low thorax is rotated to the right, Upper thorax is rotated to the left, turn to face me now, all the way around. And there's this depression of that right shoulder girdle. Okay? So there's definitely some shortening on this side, on this side of her body. Okay, Larry, take it away. And then just turn around the other way for me, Claire. So when I evaluated the pelvis using information from the last class we took, when I corrected the vector with her, she has a pole that I feel the vector is anterior on the front left. And he's jumping ahead of things, right? Because he's going into vector analysis before he's decided the driver. Stay on task. <laughs> Come on, man. Give me the positional findings of her pelvis in standing. Her pelvis is, is a TPR right? Rotate it to the right because his left hand is forward. Is it associated with an IPT, intrapelvic torsion, or an unlocking SI joint? He unwinds the pelvis, releases, and feels that left anominate rotate forward, the right one come back. So the anominates are congruent in their rotation with the transverse plane rotation. But is the SI joint unlocked in standing? Both of you now need to swing around, 180 degrees. So I palpates the SI joint, left and right side. So to determine if the pelvis is controlled in standing, we do this weight shift test and feel whether or not the sacrum remains nutated, the anominant remains posteriorly rotated. So Claire does a weight shift, and when she weight shifts to the right, that right SI joint gives way. Yep, loses control, goes into anterior rotation. So my thumb separate. Yep, and then on the left side, she retains control. Now this weight shift is just to determine where her pelvis is in standing. Because standing on the leg is not part of her meaningful task. I don't care where her hip goes. I don't care. Those are all irrelevant findings to this task that we're assessing. All right? OK, so she's standing in a right TPR associated with a right IPT because it doesn't give way until she takes her weight right on it. So in standing, she's pretty good. So then he does a lower thoracic ring screen, vertebral chondral region, Fine rings, yep. seven and eight are translated in opposite directions. Seven to the left, eight to the right. Eight to the left, right, seven to the right. Seven to the right, okay, seven right, eight left, okay. Now, is there anything else? So that's the vertebral chondral region. He, first of all, if he corrects that, so correct seven and eight, and we'll watch what happens to the pelvis when he corrects it. So if both of you can just turn 45 degrees, the other way, the other way, towards me, just this is for optimizing viewing. So there's no weight shift, Claire, it's just where are you in standing? So he's correcting seven and eight and watching what happens to the pelvis. So let it go. You see the pelvis rotate when he lets it go and it corrects when he corrects seven and eight. But look what happens to her upper body. So he may have found the driver for her pelvic rotation, but he's making this worse. 
So now we need to know what can influence 7 and 8. So what was that, Larry? We went to C7. Yeah, so we did a bunch of corrections in her mid-thoracic spine. We found all sorts of ring shifts in there, but no corrections in here made 7 or 8 better without worsening things higher up the neck. So the first thing that seemed to improve things was C7. C7 improved 7 and 8. So turn this way for me and come, to her, come behind her all the way back. So correct C7, and C7 is translated to the... It's left rotated. It's left rotated, so it's translated to the right, rotated to the left. So the correction is to give it a little bit of a lift, pull C7 back on the right, and wait for the automatic medial, medial glide. No vector analysis yet, we're still looking for drivers. Watches her pelvis. He can hold that correction now with one hand, slide the other hand down to seven and eight. Let C7 go. Keep your hand on seven, eight. Let C7 go and feel the ring shift of seven, eight come back. So that's how he's determined that correcting C7 improved ring seven and bringing the other hand, this hand over to this side, correct C7. And see if it corrects eight. All right. So correcting C7 improved C7 ring seven and eight. So they weren't glued. They were capable of independent movement. One was compensating for the other, and both were compensating for her C7. So if we treat C7, her thoracic ring seven and eight, and her pelvis will improve. But watch her head when he corrects C7. So just correct C7. And watch your head side bend. So she's going to come back and tell you she has a headache or something's not right. We're not there yet, right? But we're getting there. So what else? So let ring seven and eight go. Come up to the higher part of her neck. Correct C2. So C2 is right rotated. C2 is right rotated, which makes sense. It's unwinding C7. He corrects her C2. Her head is still side bent a little bit, it's less so. And ring seven and eight. They were better. They're better. So now, is this the driver for her task? She takes her weight to the left leg, lift your right one, and back down. And again, get a sense of what that feels like. And back down, let C2 go. Lift your right leg again. And back down. So when C2 is corrected, how's that feel, Claire? It feels better. Feels better. See the uprise at the end of the sentence? It's not quite. It's better. But <laughs> okay. So, so then I had Larry monitor her C2. And then I came in, and this is where we're going to go today. She has a twist in her cranium. So her left temporal bone is posteriorly rotated, her right temporal bone is anteriorly rotated, and her left eye is back. So this is what we call a congruent ICT. Her sphenoid rotation is congruent with her uh, torsion in the back of her head. So I'm gonna take out the twists between her temporal bones, and my fingers are on the greater wing of the sphenoid, waiting for it to derotate. And I'm out, there we go. I'm also waiting for the occiput to rock back on the atlas like a rocking chair. C2 will then unwind underneath it. Stand on your left leg, lift your right. And back down. And again. And back down. Then I let the cranium go. Stand on the left leg, lift your right. And back to that. Right. This is cranial driven hip flexion. Now we still have to add the arm elevation um, and have her actually take it to a bar. We'll do that later. We'll hang her on a bar and have her repeat the task with the cranium corrected. First place I would go with Claire is into vector analysis or an assessment of her cranium.
doing this, I can actually and you can hold see it. Yeah, wow. She's more solid yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 She's yeah. more yeah. solid yeah. as you can. Yeah. Yeah.